Hello, my name is Rosa Maria Costa Cisneros and I am collaborating with the Independent Theatre Hungary. I get to sit down today with two incredible powerhouse women that are actually sisters as well. We have Simonida Selimovic and Sandra Selimovic. Uh, I think Simonida, I'm forgetting your your second surname because I know you've recently married, so I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> One second. Yeah. Yes. So again, we're here um, with both of you to talk about heroes. Um, if you could tell me a little bit about yourself, your background. Um, yes, that'd be great. Uh, shall we start with you, Simonida? Yes. Okay. Hi, my name is Simonida Selimovic. I uh, uh, live here in Vienna and I grew up here in Vienna. The first seven years I uh, was in Serbia. I was born in Serbia. And then we uh, immigrated to Austria, mm. to Vienna. I'm one of the typical uh, Gastabite children. We, they call us here because we came in the 90s here. Mm -hmm. They need um, workers from uh, four eigenworkers. They, they pay cheap mm -hmm. and they work here and they want to send them actually back to their countries, but they didn't, they stay here. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and I started to act when I was 12 in a, a children's series in Vienna together with uh, Sandra. Sandra was 10 and I was like 12. 11 and a half 12 like this and after that yeah i started to uh, model and to play in movies with like uh, klaus maria brandauer juliette gregor and i was uh, like 16 or 17 and uh, i started uh, my um yeah then i studied uh, acting and 2010 we found romano slato yeah the theater organization Sandra and me and uh, we did also like the famous one is Roma Army that is uh, still played in uh, Maxim Gorky theater and uh, yeah we yeah. are doing um, every year new plays and together and sometimes also we are playing in other theaters like Sandra now in book theater yeah one of yeah. the famous in uh, yeah german-speaking countries okay and sandra can you tell us a little bit about you and your background yes of course hello i'm sandra Silimovic. um uh, i think i don't want no i want to tell my age i'm 40. okay <laughs> i uh, <laughs> yes i'm 40. i uh, started to act with 10 um, I became an actress 2004, like really with a diploma, like professional. Mm -hmm. And thanks God, since then, I never had to do uh, like, uh, um, how, to, how you say this in English, like a um, road job, like a, a side job to, to pay your bills, like yeah. to be, a, to be a, a waitress or whatever, yeah. like never. I was always living from, uh, uh, from art. But also, I think because I'm um, I'm really doing like interdisciplinary, like multi-talented performance, in dancing, directing, um, writing, rapping, singing. So um wait they say that my internet is bad can you still hear me i can hear you yes thank hello you. yes oh, yeah yeah okay 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 yes so so that's how i i think i lived or survived good not not of course not rich but um I always uh, had had a job or actually more jobs like some uh, uh, some were directing and they're texting and they're singing and they're having a workshop and they're acting so I really had a lot of jobs and uh, last year since the pandemic it was really for me a big challenge this this change like really from doing actually too much like uh, three four five things in the same time parallel and then nothing 
So it was really very, very hard and very, not just uh, not just financially, but also mentally, like yeah. how to deal with it, you know, with this mm-hmm. emptiness, you know, yeah. like not to do anything and not to have any, any, any mission and not to feel kind of, um, I don't know, like important. I feel like that this, what we do is important and can empower other people, yeah. especially women. And in this time, I really feel, felt really empty and like, like very depressed last year in the lockdown, really. So I'm really glad that they opened the theaters this, this year, a few months ago, and uh, we, we really could start to work. Um, and yes, I think you wanted to talk about heroes today, That's right? right? That's but, uh, right. Not, not our last week, about yes. heroes, yeah. So um, if you could tell me a little bit about heroes in your role within the work, that'd be great. Mine? Yeah, if you want to go, Sandra. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah um, uh, it was uh, a, a little bit like, uh, not, not completely, of course, but a little bit uh, the, uh, in the style with uh, Sokir and Amensa, like uh, I was meeting the dramaturg, and um, we were writing actually like a plot. A plot is like you write really like in the first scene, this and this has to happen. In the second, this and this has to happen. And then just the author just writes the, the dialogues down, but you actually already have in your head like the, the characters and what has to happen and how it will end, who will die, whatever, you no? Know? Yeah. Yeah. So, it was it was really uh, also a collective work like uh, that we had before. Uh, it was exactly when, when was it also 2011 or, or something when was this very big refugees like wave coming for to Treskirchen to the to our biggest asylum seeker like center. Uh, so they had a march. Uh, uh, and it was like a very big movement from 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 as- asylum seekers, and that's why we decided to do a, a about about this uh, topic, and especially uh, about women because I worked with another director with asylum seekers uh, uh, with a play, like to do a play with them. But what was for me always missing was where are the women. Mm-hmm. I just worked with men and to be honest, I, it was a little bit exhausting only to have young men to be surrounded with. I, I was the only in this time, it was uh, like 10 years ago. Uh, and I also, I seem very young, like a young woman and a lot of men. It was kind of strange. Mm-hmm. And I also really was curious what, what is happening with the women? Are, are they really all uh, abandoned there and alone, or are they also trying to 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 uh, you know to run away or some or somehow to escape yeah. from their countries? And what is their stories? So we were starting to dig. Uh, like our uh, our author, our dramaturg, she was really. Um, doing a research and and do, doing a lot of um, interviews with um, with all these professional people like um, in these asylum seekers like um, centers and with lawyers with social uh, uh, people uh, with, uh, social workers so she really also asked uh, people who really. Uh, had this background and really to have real stories yeah. so we connected kind of real stories with fictional things that uh, it was still something that could really happen like it, yeah. it was not something w- which we completely like um, invented because it was also kind of based of true stories yes this this yes. was what I think is very very um, yeah uh, what what, ha, what it like Sukhren uh, Amensa? What's the parallel parallel things? You know. Yes. Yeah. And Simonida, your role in the work. Yeah, I was. Uh, 
in the um, um, how you call this? Uh, we, we call it in uh, German Produktionsleitung, and I was playing. And the producer. The producer. producer. Yeah, the producer, and uh, yeah, but uh, there is also another word for this. I'm sorry, my English is not that good. No, it's and um, yeah, I um, I worked also with the author all, uh, together with Sandra. We met her and we had a lot of interviews mm -hmm. from uh, people that they were working in prisons with this, with people that they uh, did, they, they were sitting in prison without doing anything just because they don't have the right documents, mm -hmm. the right place to stay. Mm -hmm. And this was a work that depressed me a lot when I was reading the interviews or when I was listening again uh, because we recorded also the interviews and we put them together and we created three women coming from different places where they, uh, I mean, and, and talk their stories but put them in just three stories. And this was um, a very, I mean, uh, a, a work working with the, um, the law also and uh, with uh, how prison is working also as an institution there mm -hmm. and also how you could not work against law mm -hmm. this was um, very i mean for us a very big topic in this play also and for the women from their countries how they are put it together in prisons to live like year without coming out. Uh, nobody is coming to visit them. Uh, with um, also how they are oppressed. Yeah. The um, people that are working in the prison and never to know also, could I stay here or uh, will I be deported again in this country where the people will kill me when I'm back there? Mm. And this was uh, the very important question also, how you were dealing emotionally with this and also how you could uh, build relationships with other people in the prison or how is the relationship with you? Yeah. I mean, if you're like uh, in this case alone and which uh, kind of uh, thinking these people have. And uh, through these interviews, we had a few how this could work also and how we could be the, um, uh, the, 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 I mean, the actors that are staying there and talk about stories that are not ours, yeah. but for them. Yeah. And to be also, you know, on point and to not uh, put some uh, wrong stuff in it. Yeah. Just to be clear with all, with all these things that we were talking about, about deportation, about family, about relationships, about yeah. law, mm -hmm. about waiting, waiting somewhere where you don't know where you are actually about also the way uh, that uh, you came from uh, from one country to the, to the other. Also the interviews with the police, if you were an LGBT person, how, which questions they're questioning you. And I mean, through Afghanistan now, what's now happening, we have again this situation here and this, Play. I thought, ah, oh, it's an old play, Heroes, we don't have to show it anymore. But now I, uh, I'm again, they ask me people, hey, do you want to play it again? Because it's very, uh, I mean, it's not an old um, topic. Yes. This is a topic that it's, it's happened since uh, years, since, I mean, uh, yeah, how we also talked about the, um, I mean, these are really refugees and it's not just about, you know, that they, they are from war, coming from somewhere and which questions they have to face when they come in another country. They are hoping for help 
and instead of them they put them in the prison because they don't have the right papers and they don't could they could not document where they come from and why they don't have an, a passport anymore um and especially for us was very um also the female uh perspective very important how you as a woman could survive this kind of interviews how they're dealing with this which questions uh, are they facing in this uh, case and um, which opportunities they have uh, this was kind of very i mean because they don't have any opportunities not that much not yeah. like a normal person also yeah. for the documents which documents you could have to stay in a country yeah. and to be legal and to have a normal work and what if you don't have uh, the, had the opportunity in the past to learn something to be educated as a woman because they're oppressed like um, in some countries in uh, eastern countries yeah um, yeah uh, this all all these questions we put it together and we worked like I don't know eight months or twelve months in this research. Wow! Yeah, and then we had the rehearse process about six weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we That's had short. So you really gave the the research and development side of the work some time, a lot of time, and that's quite powerful. And I I think perhaps, you know, you just said six weeks to kind of rehearse and put it into a theater. Um, I think that's, a, it, that sounds short, but because you had so much love kind of dedicated already to it beforehand, perhaps, was it easy to make that transition to, to put it on stage? Yeah, because I mean, you have the time, uh, one year is not that long how we think it's long because yeah. You have to find the right person to interview yeah um, to put all these stories together mm. to in, uh, to also research the law of uh different countries mm. and to talk also with lawyers mm. with judges uh, mm. how they decide why they decide in this way yeah. what the kind of thinking they have mm. uh, and then to uh, then we had the process, okay, putting now, uh, creating three different women, three different stories and putting them together in a one room. And uh, yeah, and then in this process, and then it's very fast. I mean, if you know how you want to work in Sandra is very fast with this also, she has a, uh, when we was working and she had some uh, visions how she will um, direct it. And uh, this was, yes, uh, it, it was very, very nice and very uh, good because we know uh, actually what about we are working and also the actors that we choose, we choose them together, Sandra and me, we cast them and uh, yeah, and then at the end, okay, and I have, and she was like, and you have to play one of the actors because, okay. you, yeah, yeah, and then I was acting, I, I joined in. Okay this uh <laughs> and it was yeah, but, yeah, it was but we, we really had great extras like uh for for heroes really all three and also the policeman or like the guard was also very good for me he was i think in one rehearsal almost crying because he had to play such an asshole because he felt so bad inside and he always asked after like please tell me was it too much tell me when it when it when i hurt you you know because i really wanted it that it looks really real like how uh, he takes her for example to do this you know and uh, and 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 of course if, if you if you rehearse it you you can't not really like hurt someone if you're doing it <clears throat> professional so they really rehearse it but still <clears throat> was always very afraid to to hurt them because he's such a good guy like the opposite what he had to play you know like a very sleeny you know uh, uh, abusive guy 
So, and the women, all three were very good, very different qualities. And uh, yeah, and I think uh, the play itself, it really lives from these three characters. You mm. know, they have a lot of text, a lot of dialogues, a lot of monologues, then a song, uh, a dance. It's really, it's, it's, it's really a lot, like it's really, hard work what this this three women are doing on stage and i think it's long i think it's one hour 45 i think here was it's really long this play yeah. yeah and is there any memorable moments that you've had in either preparing for the work or in sharing the work um simonita you've done you know you were in the research and also you know as an actress does anything come to mind that you'd like to share maybe or was it all just very important and memorable and <laughs> yes uh we had actually we had a lot of fun hmm. uh, together uh the whole the team the whole team we had uh, i remember one shooting and we went to the whole day we were shooting and this was very nice. Mm. And at the end, Sandra decided, let's go to the disco. Uh, because, you know, uh, how it was just a dream, you know, we was uh, talking about the dream about uh, how it would be when you come out of this prison. Mm. Ah, yeah, the fantasy, the fantasy was the best, yes, the shooting, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we did this. Do you remember, Sander, when we did this fantasy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And this was yeah, one of yeah. the nicest days for us because we went to Nashmarkt and we went then to the sushi. Disco. sushi. <laughs> yeah, and then we had sushi, what we would like to eat, where we want to go to dance, uh, what we want to see in Vienna, and uh, yeah. how we would feel. And this was a one of the one very memorable day for me, for us, for the whole team. Yeah, uh, this, this, uh, yeah, and then the end also to be in this club mm. and dance like in the four in the morning. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it, but this was just, you know, first I just make a shooting maybe for four or five hours and then it was like really private, nice time also to have together with the team. That's a team. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And Sandra, is there anything else that comes to mind for you? Um, hmm, let me think. You mean something uh, negative also or in general something it, it which... It could be I... negative. I mean, it could be just something that sticks with you because sometimes when we put out these plays, these works that are quite um, exploring big topics, sometimes people, even from the community, might have a very strong reaction to it or you know different people have said different things to me um but if nothing comes to mind it's, you know i think you both... really people liked it uh, i think the, uh, the only thing that i remember now, now was uh, uh, the, the last uh, time that we had to play because uh, we had a, a long pause and then we want we wanted to do it again and then um one actress uh, says that uh, she she is pregnant and she will uh, she will get twins, so it was nice like congratulations. But it was like oh my god, what are we doing? And you know, if one of three is missing, it's a lot, you know. Yeah, sure. So she was out, and then one week before the rehearsal, the the other uh, the woman called and said. I think I have Corona, I'm not sure, okay. but I have fever and coughing, like these typical signs. And before I'm not doing the test, I'm not coming to rehearsing. So, and we had to rehearse and to play and to shoot it. It was also a shooting. Yeah. So we really had to replace from three women two, yeah. which is a lot. Yeah. And I will I was so nervous. I thought that it's kind of impossible to learn such such a big role because in this play there is not really a main role because it's about these three women, you no? Know? Yeah. So yeah. and they all have like mass or menos the same amount of text, you know. Yeah. So 
Um, so I really th thought that it will be a big disaster and it cannot work. I was so nervous all the time. And then I really experienced something which was really pff, something which was not from the earth. Like, wow, what the fuck? How they can have this kind of brain? They really came prepared, not just prepared. When we were shooting, they really delivered the, the text and everything. Like they played it many times and they just learned it in two days. Wow. So this was really crazy for me. Yeah. How, how actors can, can do it if they really are into it and interested and um, yeah, really want it. Uh, the, yeah, so I was really very, very, very uh, positive, impressed and surprised yeah. with this, really. And I think also um, that heroes, you really can play also like Sokrena um, Mensa. These are plays for me, which are, um, how you call this in, in, in English, like timeless. In, I think in 20 years, you, you still can play it. Maybe to change in the, in the text, maybe, I don't know, one name of a president or whatever, you know what I mean? Mm. But I think this will, I, I think so, that this kind of topics will still exist also like in 10 years, you know? Mm. Like discrimination, you know, uh, and, and deportation, whatever. Um, so that, that's the sad thing, and uh, but on the other side, of course, with this play, we are really timeless. We really can do it also in ten years again, yeah. and people will say, "Yes, I know this. This is like it's, it happened yesterday." Yeah. So I think this is kind of special and also a little bit sad that um, I don't know. I I, I have hope. But I really, um, I really hesitate that uh, this will uh, that um, uh, that it will change very very fast, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, with our bios or gadget, how you say, uh, you know, the system of our life and uh, to have the right papers, the right passport in your hand, to be the right person with an. Uh, you need a passport and if not you're nothing so I really think that uh, in 10 years it would be the same with these two plays yes and I yes I, I think it's timeless and that timeless quality as you said makes it yes. you know people can relate to it and can continue yes. to relate to it also, hopefully, um, we won't need such plays um, to, you know, to help us reflect on, on humanity. But, you know, that's one of the powers of, of the work you girls have, uh, women have been doing. And, and, you know, with both plays, with both works, bringing in people from various ages, various groups coming together, um, also the willingness and the spirit to, you know, you said two women, two of the actresses had to leave for different reasons, and then two other actresses came in and could just, you know, have a superpower <laughs> and be a superhero. Um, and so it's, it's, I think the, it shows the spirit and the quality of, of the spirit yeah. and the power of women as well. And on that note, I thank you to Power House Superhero Women for sitting down with us and sharing with us your experiences, your story. And maybe in 10 years, who knows, we'll sit down and talk again about heroes and, and you know, see it on a different stage in a different country and be able to reflect on it. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sandra and Simonita. Thank you, Rosa. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rosa. Bye. Bye-bye.